So what are you guys? We are the Swartwood family. So are you guys real Swartwood MCAT students? Hell yeah! Hey guys, so let's do that problem from the final exam review. And I think the setup was something like this. We had an Atwood machine and there was some mass here and there was a mass here. Okay, let's call this guy A and this guy B. And there's our disc, or pulley actually, and we'll give its mass MD. So MD for the mass of the disc, okay, or the pulley. And here the mass is going to be M sub B, and the mass here is going to be M sub A. Okay. Okay, so I think the question was something like this. What's the acceleration? Okay. All right, so let's just first start off with the old stuff. So you remember from the old stuff, like the second midterm review, I want to sum the forces, right? Okay, but first things first, I want to set up a coordinate system. Um, you could do it any way you want. This time I'm going to do it in a way, since a lot of people in the review really want to keep counterclockwise positive. We can do that to make life easy so things don't get confusing. Uh, what I want to do is orient everything the same way. So if I, I want the, if I want counterclockwise to be positive, right, then I need the acceleration here. Because everybody agree, we'll anticipate that this guy's going to rotate counterclockwise, which means we anticip we'll anticipate that everything will move that way. Okay? If it turns out we set up everything where this is the positive direction and the answer we get is negative, then it'll tell us it'll be going the other direction, right? Okay. So here's our setup. We set everything up the way we wanted. Uh, we want counterclockwise to be positive, right? But that means if this guy rotates counterclockwise, B is going to move upwards. So we're going to set his acceleration A to be consistent with that, okay? So on the right-hand side, up is positive and down is negative, okay? But now if this thing's turning counterclockwise and B moves up, you know A is going to move down. So to be consistent, if this guy's going in the counterclockwise direction, A would be accelerating downwards, right? Or mass A would be accelerating downwards with acceleration A. Okay, so I get that. That means, though, that to keep it consistent, down must be positive and up must be negative. Okay? So I don't want to beat this to death, but let's make sure we're comfortable. So again, if counterclockwise is the positive direction, then that means B is going to move in the counter positive direction upward, and A is going to move in the positive direction downward so that everything is consistent. Okay, now it should be a piece of cake. So first, let's focus on B. So if I want to sum the forces on B, you know MG is pulling it down, so that's MG. You know down is negative in our system. It's going to be a negative, right? You also know the only force pulling this guy up is tension, right? Let's just call that T2. So tension is going to be in the positive direction. It'll be plus T2, okay? So I've got MG going down here. And I've got tension up here, T2. Okay. All right. But you know that step one, set sum of forces equals what? Negative MB, G, negative MBG plus T2, right? But I want to set the sum of forces equal to MA. Since I'm focusing only on this body, it's going to be MBA with our given acceleration equal to negative MBG plus T2. Sorry, that's runny. That should be MB. Well, close enough. Okay, so we have our first equation. Okay, so now I want to set up another equation, right? Because we need to take care of this mass. Okay, so now let's take care of the second mass. So I get it. It's got to be something like sum of forces equal to, again, the forces on this guy are going to be MAG acting downwards. And on this side, a different tension possibly, let's call it T1, acting upwards. Okay, so in our new system, though, or at least in this beep, in our system, though, MAG is pointing in the positive direction. So it's going to be positive MAG, right? So definitely positive. And then what about the te tension 1? Tension 1 is going to be upwards, but in our system that's negative. So minus T1, okay? But step 1 is sum the forces. Step 2 is set the sum of forces equal to MA. We're talking about body A, right? So it should be body A's mass. So MA times acceleration equal to MAG minus T1. And again, I don't really have to think about this part because the way we have it set up, acceleration is set to be in the positive direction, so I just plug in A. Here I have acceleration set to be in the positive direction, so again, we just plug in A, right? Okay. If we combine these two guys, we're going to get M, so this is B, right? MBA plus MAA, that's going to be MB plus MA times A, the acceleration. Sorry, the letters are a little confusing. On the right-hand side, I'm going to have negative mbg, right, plus mag 
right? And then plus t2 and then minus t1. Okay. Okay. This is almost good. These numbers I could plug in. Uh, I could definitely know what MB and MA are, but the problem is I don't know what the tensions are, and I don't know what A is, and I'm trying to solve for A. Okay, so I need another equation. So just like in the review, that's going to force us to look at a sum of torques. Okay, because I need more info. So let's blow with this picture up. I mean, right now we just have a drawing like this. That doesn't help so much, right? Force is going on like that. Let me make it actually even bigger. Okay. So let's say we have this pulley here, right? And we have this guy here and this guy here. And remember, tension is like a rubber band. So if you pull down with this weight, on this end it pulls up, T2, but on then, that end it pulls down. So the T2 is actually pulling downward. And just like if you grab the rubber band up top and on bottom and stretched it, on this end it would pull up, we see that, but on this end it would pull down. So we have T2, or T1, sorry, going that way. Okay, so now let's do the sum of torques. So sum of torques must be, uh, let's start with T1. T1 is going to exert torque in the positive direction, because remember, counterclockwise has to be positive. So that's the force, T1, right, times, well, what's the distance from where you apply the force to the pivot? Well, that's going to be the radius, R, right? So T1, R, okay? What about sine? What's the angle between the direction of the force and this guy right here, the lever arm across? That's going to be 90. So sine of 90, you know, is 1 from the review, right? Okay, so that's it. Torque due to this guy. Let's do this one. Since this guy, if this guy were to pull it, he would make the guy rotate clockwise. So you know we're going to flip the sign, right? So it's not going to be in the positive direction, but in the negative direction. There's T2, same reasoning R, right, from here to here. And then, of course, the angle from straight across to straight down is 90. And you know sine of 90 is 1, okay? All right, so this is the sum of our torques. But that's step one. Step two is what? Set the sum of torques. Instead of equaling MA, it equals the equivalent, which is moment of inertia. Let me just write that down here. Right? Times the angular acceleration. So that is T1R minus T2R. Okay. All right. Again, that's not so bad. But if I look at this equation and this equation, the T's are fine. But that A and the alpha, they're not going to mix well. So what we need to do is get rid of one of them. But just like in the review we saw, right? The relationship is going to be to get from angular to regular, you need to multiply by r. So that means alpha r is equal to a. But I want to substitute for alpha, so maybe alpha is equal to a over r. Okay, the r in this case happens to be big R, so we say moment of inertia times a over big R is equal to t1 minus t2. I'm going to factor out the r like that. Okay, again, because we chose everything to be consistently positive, you don't have to think about it. Alpha being positive, right, is going to go with A being positive. So there's no issue here. So alpha goes straight to A. Okay. Now, now I want to substitute the moment of inertia. But you know that for a pulley, it's going to be 1 half mR squared. Or at least a pulley modeled as a disk. Okay. All right, so didn't do anything new. There's nothing fancy here. All I did was just recopy this junk. Okay, so now the next part is just make it simple. Make life as easy as possible. You know I'm super lazy, so I'll probably cross this out. I'll probably kill that R with that R. And then we end up getting 1 half big M little a is equal to T1 minus T2. This looks much more promising. I've got this guy. I've got that guy. Let's just put them together. Okay, so let's rewrite it. Let's see if we can see that in camera. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to re take this equation and rewrite him. So it's going to be m sub b plus m sub a times the acceleration a is equal to negative m b g plus m a g, right? And then you have this plus t2 minus t1. But that is pretty much this guy, right? Does everybody agree? So just to make them look better, I'm going to multiply this by negative 1. If I multiply this by negative 1, I get negative 1 half big M A, right? Sorry, my bad. Where big M is supposed to be the mass of the disk. Let's make that clear. Okay? Okay. Uh, is equal to negative T1 plus T2. But you know I did that because right up here, T2 minus T1, this is T2 minus T1. So instead of just putting in T2 minus T1, I'm just going to sub in this whole thing. So it's going to be now minus a half 
and move the disk A. Okay. And then I'm going to bring this guy over to the right hand side so I can collect all the A terms and we'll get MB plus MA, right? A plus one half M of the disk A is equal to, let's factor that G out, MA minus MB times G, right? Just rearranging, factoring out the G. Then in this case, you have apples here and apples here. Let's collect them. That's MB plus MA, sorry, plus one half the mass of the disk times A is equal to MA minus MB times G. Okay, it's getting kind of hard for me to write this. So let's do this. See if that'll work. Okay, then everything's done. All we do now is solve for A. Let's see if I can write this clearly. A is equal to MA minus MB times G, right? Divided by this whole mess, MB plus MA plus one half MD. Okay. And now the way this is set up, let's just see if this makes sense. So according to what we said, if MA is bigger than MB, I think this guy will start to rotate this way. So the acceleration should be positive. But if MA is bigger than MB, and all the terms on bottom are positive, you're gonna get a positive number, that makes sense. If MB happens to be bigger than MA, then MB is going to want to pull it down. So now it should be going the other way. It just should be negative. But you notice that if MB is bigger than MA, you get a negative number on top. So the whole acceleration, so the whole thing will be negative. So acceleration really will be negative. Okay. All right. So no big deal. Hopefully that helped.